All right, we're live. I see us live on Facebook. Nice. We're good. No, we'll give the people, well, still a couple minutes early, so we'll still let the yeah. room fill up. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys are coming with questions, the Q and A is open in the in the Zoom meeting, so you guys can. Cindy's got food. That's nice. So, <laughs> I mean, you got to share. Yeah. I'll just um, share that. What about us? The Q and A is open in the Zoom meeting, so if you if you have stuff, uh, just just shoot them in there. They'll the questions will stack up and save and. If it's something we're going to address in the course of just our slides and talking, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, at the end, we'll open it up and we'll get through everybody's questions. So yeah. as you're thinking of things, if you came tonight just for a specific thing, um, you know, this topic of kind of selecting appliances is popular. Yeah. A lot of people ask that. That's something I get asked all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, why would you use one device over another? Is one better? Is one worse? Uh, so we'll get some opinions uh, from some industry friends and, and experts here. This will be good. Okay, perfect. So we have our room filling up here. We're live on Facebook. I see a lot of folks there. Dr. Wojciechowski. See, now I know how to say his name. Boom. I see him here. That's two weeks in a row, Cindy. Two weeks That's in good. a row. I love it. <laughs> All right. So to stay on topic or stay on time. So it is eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, let me go ahead and do my share screen here so we can get started. Super excited regarding this topic. We get this stuff all the time. Let's go here. All right. So first of all, I want to welcome everyone to Sleep TV. Um, we have a really awesome topic um, for this episode. It is oral appliance selection. I get so many calls um, in our client care department regarding, you know, what type of appliances, can you recommend a lab, things of that nature. So I'm super, super excited to have two amazing gentlemen joining us this evening. We have Dr. Ronald Rosenbaum, who is not only an amazing um, client of ours. He's also my personal dentist, so I'm not biased, but he's wonderful. He knows his stuff when it comes to dental sleep medicine. Um, and then also, I want to welcome um, one of one of my lovely friends here in the DSM industry, uh, Mr. Lewis Myers, who's the VP of Sales of Somnomet. So super excited. They're both here to share their knowledge in regards to oral appliance selection and to help answer any questions you guys are going to have in regards to, you know, Anything you see in tonight's episode, or if you have any questions about the appliances we're going to show, please don't be shy. This is an open conversation. I want to make sure everybody's heard. Um, so like I said, make sure you ask your questions. We are live here on Zoom. We're also live in Facebook. So anybody here within the Zoom, please feel free to put your stuff here in the questions and answers um, area. And for those of you on Facebook, please put in your questions in the comments, and we'll be reviewing that um, at the ends of the webinar. Um, and also please don't forget that every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Sleep TV. So we have an awesome topic for next week that we're gonna go ahead and start um, sharing later on in the week and every week thereafter. So please make sure you stay tuned. Um, and not to, I feel so bad. I left out my favorite person in the whole world. We're also joined by my boss <laughs> and Sleep Group Solutions President, uh, Mr. John Nadeau. So again, as much as, I love Dr. Rosemont Lewis. That man has a lot of DSM knowledge in that noggin of his. So like I said, don't be shy. Let's have a conversation and have a really great episode of Sleep TV tonight. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. You're welcome. So Dr. Rosenbaum, if you want to go ahead and engage into this, I mean, I want to just go straight into the topic and start discussing um, basically why oral appliances and why they work before we start getting into the oral appliance selection, because I want to make sure people are understanding why we're even making oral appliances to begin with. Absolutely. Well, good evening, good evening, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here. Cindy, thank you for that wonderful intro. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're all here tonight, of course, to discuss oral appliances and um, different selections that we can make in our practice. Um, but, you know, oral appliances, uh, the function, and just to give a generic uh, explanation as far as oral appliances for everybody on tonight, um, they... Uh, help patients who are not able to tolerate uh, CPAP therapy or are at a point where surgery would be the um, next most, um, 
I don't want to use the word logical, but would be the final step for them. So oral appliance therapy uh, has been uh, around and accepted as a uh, first line defense uh, for mild and moderate uh, OSA. Um, we do have many cases where we see severe patients as well. We have uh, helped in uh, that aspect and we can get more into that too um, further in the call. But basically in oral appliance, what it does is it pulls the uh, mandible as the picture is showing here in a forward position. Uh, allowing the tongue and the uh, mandible to come forward. Um, it will not make the airway larger, but what it does, it makes it less collapsible. Uh, less collapsibility uh, leads to the airway uh, having uh, less susceptibility to collapsing, of course, um, which is what occurs every night uh, when a patient is sleeping. Um, apnea, uh, full closure of the airway, which we all know, or of course, hypopneas, which we're trying to um, uh, improve as well. Uh, which would be a partial closure of the airway, uh, as most of us are aware. I don't know how many people are, are new tonight and have um, <clears throat> you know, minimal experience or are full-on experts in uh, OSA and uh, sleep apnea treatment with oral appliances, but um, you know, uh, the appliances themselves, there's a multitude uh, out there to select from, but um, the general um, function of uh, pretty much all of them is pulling that mandible in a forward position and again, stabilizing the airway uh, for less collapsibility. Perfect. I'm gonna mm -hmm. go over to our next slide here. I wanna make sure people understand how we, there you go. Um, so measuring the oral airway. So Dr. Rosenbaum, as a client of ours, I know that you have the pharyngometer. If you could like kind of delve into measuring of the actual airway. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so in our practice, we uh, uh, heavily rely on pharyngometry and rhinometry. Um, it is something that uh, I implemented in my practice when I started my sleep medicine journey about seven years ago. Um, we use it uh, to uh, for two reasons. One, uh, as a diagnostic tool, patients in our practice, dental patients um, who don't have a sleep study done, have no idea that after about four or five questions going over medical history and a few other things that I'm going to eventually ask them, hey, or my hygienist may ask them, hey, do you snore? Um, patients that are internal like that, that don't have a sleep study, that are not even sure we are able to use the uh, pharyngometer on them for a diagnostic tool. Um, and what I mean by that is we're able to check for uh, collapsibility, how, how small their airway gets on just normal uh, inhale and exhale. This is real time live we're talking about, um, and as well as a full uh, expelling of air, how small the airway can get uh, when the patient expels all that air. And then of course we do a cross comparison of the two. We look for certain parameters that the patient may fall in, and if they fall below a certain parameter, as many of you all who are here, SGS clients and trained, um, we then recommend that that patient go ahead and have a sleep study done with their physician. Um, beyond that, uh, for patients that have a sleep study done, or even ones that we want to see if we can make a difference in their airway, we will move on to the airway metric jigs, which you see here uh, in the picture on the lower right. Uh, we use those quite a bit. Uh, we go through our vertical processes, of course, first to see which would be the best vertical to uh, make a change in the patient's airway. And then from there, if we feel we need to go a little further, um, we'll look at things as far as how, how far down that narrow part of the airway is on that pharyngometer. If it's a little bit further down towards, let's say, 15 centimeters, uh, we're going to start thinking a little bit more on the protrusive side, which is great because that allows us to see that we can potentially make a difference on protrusion versus just Vertical, and of course, patients that have it a little bit higher up, a little bit more posterior to the tongue, about you know 10 centimeters down, let's say, that we work more with the vertical. And again, uh, the pharyngometer allows us in our practice um, to see where would be the best place to uh, set that patient um, with the oral appliance. So for those of you who are before new- we even choose, Before we even choose the appliance, if I may say. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that are new in sleep, it, you know, a lot of times people come into the field and they they- you know, they decide they're going to make an appliance for themselves or a friend or family or whatever. And they're going to, you know, they just sort of arbitrarily take a forward bite position and they use cotton gauge or they use some method to just slide somebody forward and boom, that's where I'm going to make an appliance. Um, and the challenge with that is that position that you dialed them into doesn't really have any bearing on that person's airway and whether or not that's going to help them or not. And what we know in this business is that small changes of a millimeter or less in some cases, both vertically and horizontally, impact the airway a great deal. So not everybody, just like, you know, we all have different bodies, we all have different muscle tones, we all have different airways, and we all need a unique position. Some of us need 
a ton of advancement. Some of us need virtually none. Some need a lot of verticals, some need a little. And so, you know, putting everybody in the same box and saying, oh, you're going to be this open and this far forward, no matter who you are or what you're getting, is is not a recipe for for high caliber success in this. What it's going to do is create some appliances that work really well and other appliances that are not even close to the right spot. And then you're going to play the game of titration and dialing it in and changing things and um, and just trying to guess your way around an invisible map where you don't even really know where you're going. Um, so I think, you know, the the real key, you know, use of this technology is to dial that in so that, you know, Dr. Rosenbaum knows exactly where he's going with his appliance before he's made it. So all the titration, all the guessing is done with those little bite jigs while we're measuring the airway in real time. So that the appliance that gets sent, you know, or the bite registration that gets taken and sent to, uh, you know, Lewis's lab Somnomed is in the right spot already. It's in a position that we already know is ideal for this patient to eliminate that collapsibility. So again, for those of you that aren't using this technology, that's why we do it. And, and, and that's, that's how you know, our offices that are doing it this way are so successful with sleep. Yeah. yeah. And before we delve deep into, because we're going to go into, you know, extreme detail of the different types of appliances that Somnomed offers, um, which I'm super excited to get fitted for mine tomorrow. Um, but I want to, Dr. Rosenbaum, you know, as a patient, you're, you have a very busy practice. You guys are doing really, really well in sleep. I would love for you to share because so many clients are always asking me information. And I always love, you know, some peer-to-peer -peer information of you could share what goes on in your practice in regards to some of the cases you've seen, what makes you choose an oral appliance for a particular patient. And feel free to share like two different types of cases that could come off at the top of your head um, that could help our viewers. Sure. Absolutely. Well, um, I use a variety of appliances. Uh, my practice, uh, we, we choose uh, many times based on the patient's anatomy, what we see. I um, arch width, crowding, of course, the size of just the patient's oral cavity, what we think might fit in there. Um, you know, there are some parameters that sometimes we're stuck in, for example, with a Medicare patient, which everybody's familiar with, a Herbst appliance. Um, we are bound to their their rules, so many times we will make a Herbst appliance uh, for our patients that are Medicare, um, and of course patients that um, you know grind as well. It's a very helpful appliance for those that grind their teeth. Um, but for us, uh, you know, a lot of patients don't like the um, the Herbs. They just they just don't. They they're not fans of the bars. They see it immediately, and they're kind of like, you know, that's just we see that reaction quite a bit. Doesn't mean they're right as far as what it's what it's going to do for them because technically we're setting that appliance in a position that we already located that is optimal for them but we do understand comfort and what patients see visually um in our practice we tend to choose the appliance for the patient we don't just put out a you know a whole table full of appliances and say hey which one do you like which one looks best to you um again certain factors such as grinding is taken into consideration but um Lewis, you're on the call tonight. Uh, we do love the Avant. We use the Avant quite a bit in our practice, which we'll be using with um, with Cindy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to working her up for that. Um, you know, it's a comfortable appliance. Um, of course, we love the strap in the front, which makes it less bulky on the side. Patients do like that. There is other appliances that we work with, and I'm not here to plug one company over another, I'll be honest, but we do work with multi multiple appliances, uh, whether they're milled, uh, PMMA or nylon. Um, we've tried all there's various opinions as why one might be better than the other if the patient needs a ton of dental work um you know some some docs um such as myself may not want to lean towards a nylon appliance um you know if you have a lot of dental work to be done an appliance with a soft internal um component uh is also very helpful as well for patients that do have a lot of dental work that uh, needs to be done or has been done of course um but um you know, we look at the arches a lot and tongue size and what the patient would, I don't want to use the word fit in their mouth, but what we think would fit comfortably for that patient, um, given the parameters of what we're working with. So, um, yeah, we, we have a variety of cases. So we had a chef uh, that came in, this is a chef uh, that came in, broke his appliance, 
He's actually, he was in Assamnamed, um, uh, and uh, I believe he was in Assamnadent, and uh, he was protruded about eight, Kathy would know better than me, uh, the, the number, I believe it was either six or seven millimeters protruded, and he broke his appliance. Says he was feeling great with it, hasn't been to a, a sleep dentist or any doctor in quite some time. He just came to us for a new appliance. Okay. He thought we were just going to set him in that same position, make him another appliance and have a nice day, but that was not the case. We ended up doing a uh, pharyngometry, of course, on him, found him a much more comfortable position with a more vertical, a lot less protrusive. I believe he was a 10-2. So, you know, that patient, uh, when that appliance gets inserted, he's going to notice quite a difference. And he also just visually saw it on the screen. Um, what changes we made without having to protrude him so far and just adding vertical. So I thought that was pretty cool. And we are making him an Avant uh, for his replacement appliance, which he was uh, requesting. We, we showed him just a few. Um, so that was a, I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Um, crowding of teeth is a real issue that we look at and we take into consideration, of course, when we're making appliances. Um, certain ones, and I won't get into names again, but uh, can become a little challenging when there's crowded dentition and quite difficult um, to place. And in those scenarios, we do choose uh, certain other appliances. Um, anybody who wants specifics and what we use, please feel free to email me directly or message me on Facebook. Cindy, if you can share um, yeah, of course. our office email info at drswast.com, feel free to you know send us a message. I'll be happy to share a little more detail of what we're using. But, um, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely something we take into consideration. There's not just one appliance that fits all. And, um, you know, it's funny, when I first took my first sleep course, it was a, a two-day course, weekend course. Uh, I won't say who it was. And they presented great things on, um, on sleep apnea. And it was my first taste. Uh, you know, I got into this actual field because of, of my parents. My parents are on, were on CPAPs. And, uh, you know, we, I felt something or the need to do something to help them because I knew they weren't wearing it. And um, so, you know, I got them on oral appliances. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, in that class that I had mentioned at the end, they saved the appliances for the end and they just showed all, about 20 or 30 different appliances that they went through each one. And by the time that was done, I was like, oh my God, like maybe I need to do a little more, uh, you know, a little more education on this before I just jump in and start treating patients. Because all those appliances thrown at you, you're kind of like a little overwhelmed, like, oh my God, what do I choose? What's the right one? Everyone has a different advantage on their end, of course. So, you know, it was a little overwhelming then, but then of course, uh, my next step from there was training with sleep group solutions and and locating positioning. And that changed my outlook on um, on that. And as time went on, I got more comfortable with, you know, what appliances work best in my wheelhouse. And then of course, which ones I would recommend for patients, uh, depending on anatomy and, um, comfort. So. Perfect. I want to touch base. So, that <laughs> no huge help. Thank you. Cause I have so many clients that call in all the time asking about different things. Mm -hmm. So this webinar series for the next few webinars, we really want to focus in and invite, you know, labs to discuss, because I always want to hear from the, um, viewpoint of the actual, um, DSM dentist who's actually doing this in their practice and what they use and so forth. But just to lend, you know, extra information into the actual oral appliances and the function and warranties and how those work, you know, who bettered and to have a representative from the lab itself, so which is why I'm very glad that Lewis is here, um, yeah. just to, you know, help answer some questions that I know that Sleep Group Solutions gets all the time from um, existing clients. So that does tend to help. Um, Moving along here, I have, so this was an example. I wanted to pull something in terms so people can actually see, you know, how finding an optimal position helps. So um, this is a little slide. And John, if you want to like, you know, chime in yeah. while people are and looking what at we're, What we're looking at here is, and, you know, this is a pharyngometer data readout. So if you're not familiar with it, that's okay. I don't expect you to, but the bottom line is this is a reading of an airway and essentially the higher the line is on the screen, the more open the airway is, right? So the line that's closer to that bottom access, the more constricted the airway. Um, and what we're looking at here is kind of a, a before and after position. So the red line is how collapsible this patient's airway is. Um, just naturally. And then the yellow line is showing how collapsible the airway is 
with a bite repositioning jig in place that's opening the airway up a little bit. And I think Cindy on the next slide kind of show like a before and after of, um, of, you know, and this gets to the point of what I was mentioning before where, you know, probably, and I, I've been doing this 20 plus years and, and actually my Lewis, my first appliance was a, was a Somnomet appliance um, back like the very original version uh, you know, from Australia, but it was, it was the first one. And, and uh, um, I wore that thing for, uh, I, I wore it out, but that was back 20 years ago, almost. Um, the, uh, but what this is showing is, is kind of the point I just made earlier too, about pharyngometry, where there's a lot of people that are getting put into a position that are not necessarily doing the best good or the most good that could happen because we're just sort of guessing on where to start. Um, and so if you look at the baseline readings here on the left of this patient, you know, AHI, RDI, SpO2, you know, the, the T90 number, all really bad, super, you know, easily severe uh, metrics. And, um, an appliance in kind of a random arbitrary guest position, probably not so much different than the case that Dr. Rosenbaum just mentioned, um, improved somewhat, but not, you know, not completely over the line. Um, and then all of a sudden, when you put them in the right spot, you get significant improvements. So it's kind of the, you know, it's the the mm -hmm. point to make is you can't just put it in there and and have it magically cure things. It has to be in the right position. Um, but then at the same time, it has to be comfortable. The patient has to comply with it um, because if if it's not in the right spot and it's not comfortable and there's side effects and pain and other issues, which I hope we can get into when we talk about different devices, I mean, that's that trumps even this stuff because if they don't wear it or it's not, you know, it's not doing its job, then it doesn't matter. Um, Agreed. Absolutely. All right. And I don't even know that case that I mentioned. I don't even know. Well, we don't know yet. Obviously, we can probably do a sleep study on him with the appliance that's broken. With the new appliance, yeah. So, yeah, to see because he 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 has no idea if it was even doing the right thing because he never followed up after he had that appliance made and it was cranked out. Sure. Way too far, in my opinion. But you know, <laughs> that is pretty. Okay. Hard. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just a just a quick addition to what John was just saying about about compliance, we talk so much about CPAP non-compliance. Um, and, uh, you know, oral appliance therapy is, is uh, if not done right, what are we doing if our patients aren't, aren't wearing our devices, not going to bed in them, but, but sleeping with them in the mouth all night long? Right. That is the objective. That is not the measuring stick for PAP, unfortunately. That needs to be uh, that that is our measuring stick, and it should be the measuring stick for all therapies. But uh, yeah, a nice, comfortable, well-fitting appliance. We know our patients are gonna are gonna be in it all night. Perfect. And with that, that leads into this handsome <clears throat> fella. Uh, so we're gonna start going into oral appliance, the different types of oral appliances. Guys, this is the time where, as he's just as Lewis is discussing the appliances and so forth. Um, and I do see some, you know, familiar names here in the group. Ask the questions posted here in the Q&A in the chat for those of you on Zoom, post it on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, we're going to start delving into the different types of appliances. But if there's anything you're curious about, start posting the questions so that we could review those afterwards. All right. So let's get into here. And yeah. it's all yours, Lewis. Yeah. Well, first of all, sleep group, thanks so much for asking me to be here. It's awesome. Um, hi everybody. When I'm when I'm taking uh, when I'm taking people when I'm taking dentists through the, the things that we're about to cover, um, I like to start with this device. The the Somnodent Classic is the device that John was just talking about that he uh, started using. You know, close to 20 years ago. It probably wasn't quite that. Not Somnomed, quite that long ago, but yeah. almost. <laughs> Somnomed, uh, Somnomed it was a brand new company in 2004 and then came to the U.S. in 2005. And the first uh, wing device, you're looking at it right there, the classic, was uh, the first patient got into a classic in 2006. It might have been John, John Nadeau. We're not, we, the first ever. Uh, <laughs> but but the, the Somnomed classic is 
uh, a wing device with ball clasp retention. So kind of that, you know, older technology, if you will. Um, and this is still a device that we make available today. There's, there's reasons, there's clinical reasons why a patient uh, might need ball clasp retention. And so we continue to make uh, to make the classic available. So that's a good starting point. It's a good launching pad because this is this device is what started it for Sam and Ed. Okay. And and Lewis, this was the original dorsal, right? If I'm not yes. mistaken. Like it was the really the original kind of like dorsal style appliance on the market. It was. That's correct. All right, let's take a peek here. Look classic. Voila. Excuse yeah. Me. We We've we've come a long way. Somnomed has nine different devices in the family of devices. We're not going to go through um, all of them tonight. Just a couple. Um, you are looking at the Herbst Advanced Elite. Uh, this is our PDAC approved, Medicare approved, right? Um, Herbst device. Been on the market now for just a couple of years. It is milled. Um, it is lower profile than, than a, than a non-mill device. We all know that these, these mill devices are typically more robust or stronger. Um, and there's a couple of interesting little, um, features in, in this, in the Herps Advanced Elite that I'll point out here real quick. Number one, at the bottom picture there shows the visual indicator. That is a Somnomed proprietary, uh, visual indicator that you see there. You can tell exactly where the patient is, um, the, the, the protrusive position. Um, super helpful if you're troubleshooting over the phone, patient is complaining about a little discomfort on one side. Well, look at the left side. What does it say? I'm at a four. What's the right side? I'm at a two. Ah, yeah, that's, that's not right. <laughs> you shouldn't be there. Uh, so uh, make, makes it easy for the patient to see exactly where they're at, easy to titrate. Um, <clears throat> The top picture shows the optional cheek protectors. You can see that uh, PMMA acrylic that just kind of flares out around that screw, um, that anterior screw there, which helps deflect the tissue away from the screw. Um, I, I, I heard what Dr. Rosenbaum is saying. Absolutely, Herps devices can look a little intimidating at first for sure. Um, but as we all know, oftentimes the patient doesn't have a choice. The insurance and, the, and or the Medicare will dictate what the patient gets. And um, I can say with a very high level of confidence, this Herbst Advanced Elite is really, really comfy. And one of the reasons is because of that nice, uh, what we call the cheek protector there around the screw. It's not included on all devices. It's an option. It doesn't cost anything to add it, but it's an option. Uh, and the reason why it's made optional is because it's a dentist preference thing. Some dentists just less is always better. Less material in the mouth is always better. I don't want a cheek protector. And so don't order the cheek protector. Uh, and that's all, that's all good. Um, the Herbs Advanced Elite also comes with our B-Flex soft liner. This is a proprietary material. It's only available from Somnomed. It's a German company that, that the company bought about 10 years ago uh, and developed this, this, this really unique um, soft liner. Uh, I want to point out, it's not anything that's laid into the device. B-Flex soft liner, the material itself is also PMMA based. The hard outer shell is PMMA. So you've got a molecular bond there that happens. Uh, and the B-Flex is, is, um, is milled into uh, the, uh, the hard shell of this device. So if you, if, for an analogy, if you think about a, I think about when you sink your, when you sink your your head into a memory foam pillow, and you just kind of get this this, the, the pillow just kind of wraps up around your neck, wraps around your shoulder. This is this is kind of what Bflex provides the patient, um, this even distribution of pressure uh, all around each individual tooth in the mouth creates this super comfortable and you have a little bit of just a 0.08 millimeter of material there between tooth and between hard PMMA plastic. Uh, and that little barrier there provides a, a, a super, super resulting comfortable finish that provides uh, what Somnum, one of the things Somnomet is known for and that's that drop-in fit the first time fit. Should be comfortable from the get-go. 
The last I know, thing I'll point I, out. I, I know as a a, a yeah. uh, oral appliance patient and having worn pretty much every device that exists, this is you know this this style with that liner is my favorite by far. You know, in term from a patient comfort standpoint, and you know there's there's a lot of devices that are just hard milled acrylic and you know sometimes getting those to just snap in it's like you know <laughs> the first time i'm putting it in and it, it, it's always like damn this is tight like it's scary sometimes to get it to really snap and when it goes it goes and it's fine but um that extra i don't know how thick it is lewis but like these just drop in it just flicks in with almost yeah. no effort and to me that's from a patient just purely as a user that's cool like yeah yeah, when, you have a, when you have a patient that's sitting there like after they put it in they're like, yeah. oh, like oh boy okay yeah <laughs> I've, I've been there where i get in the oh. pliance and i'm like okay yeah you know, are, are, am i gonna get some are, are the crowns gonna come with it when i pull on it uh yeah it's scared yeah. you know the, the the comfort and the drop-in fit is is definitely what we talk about most often but yeah. the retention the retention that B-Flex soft liner provides is outstanding. Um, and if you think about it, this even distribution of pressure amongst all of your teeth um, is a lot different than what, what, what you described, John, as like a wedge fit device, right? You snap it in and, and the only get really good retention is for it to be really, really tight up against your teeth. So the B-Flex soft liner is a difference maker for sure. Uh, Lewis, does, does that B-Flex soft liner, does it, with time, does it? I know. I know you said it's incorporated into the appliance. It's not like it's a separate soft liner that starts. Does to it delaminate? Into. Does it eventually no, you shouldn't wear have out, or risk, does it? You shouldn't have any risk of delamination because it's milled into the PMMA hard outer shell. Um, if 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 anything like that is happening, something is probably going on in the cleaning regimen uh, mm -hmm. for the patient. And number two, um, it is. No questions asked, covered under our warranty. We don't repair these things, we completely replace them. Um, and, and actually that dovetails into the warranty. Let me just talk about the warranty on this Herbst Advanced Elite real quick. Um, it comes with a full five-year warranty, no questions asked. We don't need documentation that the patient actually has Medicare. It's none of our business. Kind of a HIPAA thing, is that not? I don't wanna know. It is five years, period. Okay, and, and that's a beautiful thing when you, when you are treating Medicare patients. Why? Because Medicare approves for a new device for a Medicare patient every that's five years. <laughs> exactly. Every five years. In addition to the five-year warranty, we also put on a three-year no questions asked even if the dog eats it guarantee. Now, I know it's kind of funny. It's kind of fun. Yes, we've replaced ones that the golden retriever has chewed up, but but it is, it's fun marketing. It's, it's Sonda Med's way of saying, look, this thing ain't going to break. It's, it is, it is that robust. It is going, it, if you're used to Herb's devices breaking, somebody asked a question in the chat, what devices oftentimes break? Oftentimes it's Herb's because you have, you have, you have components here that are subject to breakage, especially with your side to side Bruxers. Right. So in addition to a five year warranty, there's a three year, no questions asked. If it breaks for any reason, we don't fix these things. We're just going to make you a new one. That's beautiful. I like that five year warranty, especially with the whole regards of how often Medicare changes out the appliance. So that's good that I could let my team know. Yeah. Let's take a peek here. And the patients appreciate that, which is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. The Avant. The Avant. The Avant is the Cadillac of the Somnomed line for sure. You, if you've never seen this device, take a look here. It's different. Um, there's no wings. There's no locking you in, right? You have this amazing freedom of movement, this nice side-to-side -side movement. Um, this is my device. This is what I sleep with every night, and I am a Bruxer. And I am telling you, there is a big difference. I used our fusion device, one of our wing devices for my first couple of years with the company before we brought the Avant to market. And I would wake up in the morning with just my, you know, my masseters were on fire. You know, I was just fighting against the, those, those uh, uh, 
the dorsal fins every night. The Avant just provides this beautiful side-to-side -side movement, as you can see here. And this is a real stiff demo, but as, as, uh, as it gets wet in your mouth, um, and, and the strap kind of uh, loosens up a little bit, you've got this nice side-to-side -side movement. It's really nice. So the shorter the straps, the more protruded you will be, okay? And that is a full one millimeter advancement. It's important y'all know that. Uh, full one millimeter advancement and the, uh, the device comes with eight straps. Um, also milled, also with our B-Flex soft liner. Um, and the, the, only, uh, the only knock that the Avant has received up to this point in time is that the, the straps can stretch out over time, particularly, this is purely anecdotal when I say this, per, but what we've seen is it's particularly evident in patients that, that, that brux aggressively side to side. They just, they just put pressure on that strap. It's a nylon strap, it will stretch over time. Not all to, not really all that different than EM, EMA uh, EMA devices if you if you if you use them before. What we have done in the near term, hang on a second, I'm going to tell you what the permanent fix is here in just a second. What we've done in the near term is we have made replacement straps available to the patient through the dentist office, um, free of charge. So if the M medium five is the ideal protrusive position for this for a patient that's stretching out and kind of needing a new strap about every couple months or whatever, um, give customer service a call. We'll send you a baggie of, a, of, of some uh, M5s in the baggie. Go ahead and give it to the patient, no charge from us, and that'll get them through. The longer term permanent fix for this is a strap with a stainless steel core. Uh, that won't stretch at all. It, it's really, truly going to make the Avant a completely bulletproof device. Can't wait. It has been tested in the market, um, and the engineers went back making a couple of tweaks. Um, and I, I am told that we are really, really close to launching these new these new uh, straps to the marketplace. So they'll be out soon. Perfect. Yeah. Does that does that five year warranty apply to the Avant as well, Lewis, or is that just for the for the herps, if I may ask. That's just for the herps of Anti-Elite. Again, it was done to mirror the Medicare coverage. Gotcha. Um, the Avant has a three-year warranty, but it has the same three-year, if it breaks for any reason, no questions asked, we make you a new one. Okay. That's nice. great. Thank you. I, I sent Cindy this slide just because I like it. Treatment-focused, technology-driven is the tagline for Somnomed. This is exactly what we're focused on, focused on good patient outcomes, always the right treatment for the right patient at the right time is another Somnomed tagline. If, there, if, if CPAP is the treatment of choice for that patient, awesome. If they wanna un go under the knife and get inspired and get a permanent fix to the problem, terrific. The right treatment for the right patient at the right time, we will get our fair share. And technology driven is where this company is headed. Technology is the future. We know that. We know these fun things are on the horizon. They're coming. These compliance and efficacy monitoring technologies. Um, I, I, I can't talk about it. We're not ready to, the FDA won't, won't let us talk much about it, but just know that um, R&D is hard at work bringing next generation devices to the market. So, so stay tuned on that. Lewis, amazing. Yes. Love you so much. This was really, really great. I'm super excited. For my Avant. Um, and like I said, anybody who has any questions, start, I see some trickling in here, but um, I'm going to check our Facebook in a second. So make sure you're typing up your questions and we'll go over it. Um, in the meantime, um, please feel free to visit our Sleep Group Solutions website, sleepgs.com. We do have some upcoming courses where you know, we go over the signs and symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea. I do see some clients in here, but I see a lot of names that I'm not familiar with. So if this is something you're looking into implementing in your practice or to grow your existing dental sleep practice, um, please, you know, keep an eye out for one of our upcoming courses. We have them all over the place. And if you can't come to a course, reach out to us and have a discussion with us because we have um, options where we could come to you um, to you and your team in your practice and do a course within your um, office. 
Um, we do this all the time. It's something it's that become really popular lately. Super and, popular, actually more yeah, popular I mean, than the seminars. Obviously, it's COVID, nice. nobody wanted to come to seminars, but even after, as things are you know all normal and open again, um, you know it's hard. It, sleep is a is a very team driven uh, part of your practice, uh, or it should be anyway. Um, and so getting your whole team on board is huge and having a sleep care coordinator or a sleep champion or somebody in the practice that can kind of carry the torch and run that's not the doctor yeah. uh, that can produce that, that can produce sleep revenue while the doctor is still doing other dental stuff in, in a lot of cases. Um, so, you know, it's tricky to bring your entire team to Chicago or DC or wherever for a course, but, uh, you know, talk to us, we can come to you if it makes sense to do that. Um, I saw a question, Cindy, come up in the Q&A box uh, about, are, are we doing the pharyngometer jig measurements at the initial appointment, or do you bring them back after a sleep st study? Typically, you could do it either way, but typically we're going to, we're going to do the jigs we're going to dial in a position you could try five or six or seven different positions that's generally done at your records appointment that's a longer you know that's a longer time commitment and you yeah. want to do that once the patient's committed once they're moving forward and now you're gonna you know you're gonna do the bite and you're gonna dial that in um you, you're gonna do it then um if you want to do it quick as kind of a proof of concept to the patient if they're doubtful if they're hesitant uh, I don't mind doing, you know, just a quick kind of, hey, look what happens when we move you here, but save the bite and really the fine tune dialing in till they've, till they've committed, they're diagnosed, they're ready to go. 100%. Um, you made a good point there, John, if I may say that, yeah, that sometimes you do want to do that, you know, that patients, at least in my experience, they, they like to see it, even if they're just, they come to us, they don't have their sleep study yet, we got to work them up. You know, like you said, we'll just run them quickly through a few of the jigs so they can see that we can, you know, make a difference in their airway. You know, we'll just run them through some verticals and maybe just a few protrusive, just, you know, when you have a good staff and you have uh, good support um, to do this, like John said, it's uh, super important and you can, you know, you can give that extra information to the patient so they can feel comfortable knowing that, okay, I'm going to go get my sleep study done. I already can see that they can make a difference in my airway. I want to get my oral appliance. Let's, you know, let's do it. Let's get moving. So sometimes that will be very helpful to get that case um, to close in all honesty. So it's a good point, John. Um, I have a comment here. Kate had mentioned, I mean, in regards to the bumper. Um, so the bumper is great for people who sleep with their face into the pillow, mm -hmm. which is, I didn't even think about that because I'm, I'm a rotisserie chicken when I sleep. So sometimes my face mm -hmm. is in the pillow. So that's actually a good feedback. Let's take a look here. Someone is asking, is there a price difference? I guess we could go into lab fees. So is there a price difference between the basic ERPS appliance and the advanced elite? Yeah, the, the, the advanced elite is typically a little bit more, um, but we are really, really sensitive to the fact that Medicare reimbursements are low and uh, you're not gonna typically find that that Somnomed herbs are, are, are really expensive, even though I believe they are the top of the line device. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, pricing is one of those weird things, right? It's, it's, it's oftentimes volume driven, you know, the more you send, the better price you get, um, or it's, it's potential driven. Um, if, if, if the potential for an office is X, then, then the price drops to this. My sales team, has no um, handcuffs are totally off them to negotiate on price. Um, so if you don't know who your Somnomed rep is, uh, drop an email to US sales at somnomed.com and, uh, and, and you know, let the team know that you were on this webinar and, and, and where you live so that we can get it to the right uh, account manager. Um, and you guys need to have a little price discussion if, uh, if you want to. Yeah. And for existing clients, you know, always feel free to reach out to me. You know, that, you know, I'm always honest with you guys and I want to get you guys the best help. There's been plenty of times where, you know, I've introduced, you know, clients to, and Lewis, you've always been such a huge help. And I thank you for that because my clients are like my heart and I want to make sure they're always taken care of and between, yeah. you know, 
Spencer and Mark and every you guys, the reps are always really great to my clients. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I okay. want to, uh, let me see. We have, oh, Dr. Saeed. This is a newbie to DSMs, a new client of ours, says my patients love the Avon so far. Um, so that's really nice to hear. Let's see here. Um, guys, any other questions? Let's take a peek here. I'm um, checking Facebook. Anything on Facebook, Cindy? I'm not on there right now. Yeah, I'm on I'm on so many things right now. I'm like all over the place. Um, <laughs> uh, he's like, now, oh, Faustine is on Facebook. She said, hi, Dr. Rosenbaum. Uh, let me take a peek. So I don't see any questions on Facebook, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to get questions later. So this always tends to happen. Like if, you know, uh, people think of a question it's after the fact and they reach out to client care at sleep group, feel free to do that. You know, everyone, all of our clients have now a dedicated rep. We can help you guys out. And as you guys come across with new questions, um, like I said, I, I always reach out to Dr. Rosenbaum, to John, you know, I'll reach out to Lewis um, so you could get a rep to help a client. So let's take a peek here. I don't think I have any other questions here, which is so, really- So Cindy, so Cindy, let me lead the group or let me uh, cover something important that I just want everybody to hear. And that is, so if you're not familiar with Somnomed, um, I can't think of a better way to get started than get a device for yourself. And I would never charge you for that. Um, we do no charge devices for dentists. Uh, if the dentist isn't interested for whatever reason, let's make <clears throat> let's make it for a staff member or for the dentist spouse, somebody like that, somebody important in the dentist's life. Um, no charge for that. I, I can't think of a better way to, to put your toe in the water with Somnomed than to experience these devices for yourself. And then when you're talking to patients, you're speaking from personal experience. For those of you on the call that maybe are a little bit more familiar with Somnomed, you are working with us already. If you are on the receiving end of physician referrals, kudos to you. You've done a hell of a job if that's the case. Way to go. That's the way you scale your dental sleep business. Please know that we won't charge you for devices made for your referring physicians. I can't think of a better advocate and a better scenario then when Dr. Sleep Physician is talking to their patients and they've got the mannequin on the wall wearing a mask and they pull out an Avant demo out of their pocket and say, or this, this is what I use at night. And that happens all the time. The beautiful thing there is if you are, if, if, if you're making a, a Somnomed device for a sleep physician, how's that physician gonna get fit for the device? The physician has to come to your office. The physician has to come to the mothership and see how things are run and see your professionalism of you and your staff. They're going to see your pharyngometer. They're going to see the iOS scanner, which is always impressive. I don't care who you are. So that that physician can then go home or go, go back to the office, talk to their patients and tell them what an amazing experience it was in your office. Never a charge for that device. Because what is it going to do? It's going to drive more cases to you, and it's going to drive more cases to Somnomed. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, I say I got some more questions. Got a couple more just, questions. Yeah, I was muting myself because my dogs are acting crazy in the background. Um, so I have. Uh, so here, is there a type of appliance that patients complain about the most, whether it be dorsal, herbs, tap, etc. And I think this kind of lends to position, which is why a lot of our clients utilize the pharyngometer to find that optimal position. So we could find a working um, position where the airway is responding, but then also we can take into effect patient comfort. Um, and based off of feedback I've gotten off of clients and, you know, Dr. Rosenbaum, everybody else chime in if you'd like. I, I, and it's hit and miss, depending on, you know, the size of a tongue, I know sometimes with the tap, I feel with the hinge in the front that could infringe on tongue space. But I mean, Dr. Rosenbaum, you probably see this a lot more. I'm um, seeing active patients in terms of an appliance that patients may complain about, like a type of appliance. Uh, yeah, usually it's it's the 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 most complaints that we get on an appliance, and again, I won't say which one, but um, is usually it's when it's too tight and they feel that pressure and we drop it in and we'll have to adjust. Uh, a lot of times we'll have to do adjustments along the, and I think this, oh, 
credit this to Dr. Carollo uh, as far as adjustments that he showed me some nice tricks. Um, but adjusting the uh, cervical margins um, uh, on the appliance on the posteriors, a lot of times when there's crowding, of course, in the anterior, that can get quite tight for the patient and comfort is usually, um, that's usually what uh, creates that that barrier for the patient where they just feel discomfort because it is so tight on the, um, on the dentition. Uh, many times we'll adjust it, of course, and the patient will come back for further adjustments, just like a denture, um, a brand new denture in the patient's mouth. Looks beautiful, fits great. Patient says, feels great. They leave. All of a sudden, you got a phone call two days later. Ouch, I'm in so much pain. Help me, I need an adjustment. Similar scenario or similar principle that we find um, in those cases. Um, but uh, yeah, usually it's the tightness of the appliance that we find a lot of uh, issues with um, when they do occur. Um, the uh, Again, the, the bars on the on the herps, um, Lewis, I love the, the caps, which is great for patients for the cheeks. I think that's amazing. Um, that helps a lot. But uh, yeah, some patients, they just can't um, get too used to it. I mean, some of these bars, they extend a little far um, into the anterior region or the canine region, and the patient is protruded, and you can see it. You can see the bars coming out in this direction, and they're not comfortable and you know, we've run into a couple of those scenarios as well. And we've had a couple of cases where we've switched the patient out to a to a different appliance. To be honest, they got a Medicare appliance. It's approved. They don't like it. It's paid for. They got it. But then what do they do? They're not wearing it. We offer them other options that they can, uh, you know, of course, have to pay out of pocket. But, um, you know, we do offer them other options for more comfort. Um. And this may lend to you as well, um, Dr. Uh, Rosenbaum. So I have somebody asking for VA patients, are there restrictions on what appliances can be, be made? Because I know we spoke specifically about Medicare patients, which lends to another question here where someone's asking, Medicare patients can only do ERPs with the, you know, a question mark here? Because I know there's Medicare guidelines, which, yes, it has to be a hinged appliance, Medicare approved appliance. But for VA pa uh, patients, are there any restrictions on the appliances there? Uh, not the ones that have come to our practice. Um, I'll be honest, uh, there are some other VAs that, and other uh, colleagues of mine that work with the VA that are using the TAP. Uh, the TAP, even in the VA here in uh, Miami, that's uh, they don't do a lot of appliances, but the ones that they do do, uh, usually it's a TAP appliance. I don't think it's by requirement. I think it's more as far as hospital policy and what they approve um, for them to use. I just don't think they have the option to be like, hey, let's just make you an Avant. It's, I think they're limited in their clinic in the actual VA. Now, VA patients that come outside the clinic that come to us, we are not limited to, and there's no rules telling us that, hey, we got to make them a Herbst or anything like that, or we have to make them a TAP. That's all we're allowed to make them. There's no, you know, no policy telling us outside of the VA what we can or cannot make them. Okay. There was um, another question specific to using Herbst for Medicare. So yeah, Medicare has... There's, there's all the appliances out there that are FDA cleared, right? And there's dozens and dozens and all these different kinds and brands. And then there's Medicare requirements and this separate PDAC approval list, which is a much narrower list and certain requirements in there to have a hinged appliance. So the, the two piece dorsal style gen, don't, don't fit that requirement, um, which is political and stupid and shouldn't be there to begin with. Uh, but regardless, most of the appliances that got onto that PDAC list were Herbst style because that's that's what fits that requirement. There are a few others, but generally speaking, when you see people talk about Medicare approved devices, um, it does have to specifically be there. So your your buddy's lab down the street that does Crown and Bridge and they can make a Herbst that doesn't count. That's not on the list. Um, it, the lab and the appliance itself have to be approved. Lewis can speak to that more. But. You know, I asked that same question a ways back um, because when you think about Medicare, that's government. They require a herbs style appliance, right? You got the VA government. One might assume we're <laughs> they going to have the same don't rules, care. but they don't. <laughs> Yeah, they don't. To answer your question, the VA does not stipulate which device. <laughs> yeah, which is good. That's, yeah. it should be like that across the board. <laughs> All right, I have another question here because we're almost running out of time. Uh, what if someone gets an appliance and find they have trouble with comfort? Will adjustments help or can they be switched to a different appliance if necessary? Any feedback? Adjustments do help for sure. 
if they can be switched to a different appliance, Lewis, you can answer that one. Well, I mean, if we can be shown that, uh, you know, first of all, it, it, it's a little bit of a trap question, right? The, like every other oral appliance manufacturer out there, we are all only as good as the records we get. You know, we, we, we're going to make that device off the records we get. And um, if, if the device doesn't fit well, and if, and, if, and if we made it off the records we got, then should Somnimed pay for it, a new device or should any of our competitors pay for a new device? It's, it's, it's an age old question, right? So a, a lot of it gets, a lot of it ends up on my desk. <laughs> and I'm like, who's the dentist? You know, I mean, like, what's the story? Explain it to me. What happened? Do we have a picture of the scan? Pull it up on, on the laptop. Let me take a look. You know, is, is there a pull? Is it this? Is that what happened? And so every, we, want, we want to look at everything individually. And we want you to be successful. And we want the patients, most importantly, we want the patients to be in good treatment. So I'll just say that we will take everything as a one-off and it'll probably involve a discussion between our technical team and the dentist to try to figure out what, wrong, what went wrong so that it doesn't happen again, especially if we eat that, uh, the, the case and redo it, let's do everything we can to troubleshoot it and, and make sure whatever went wrong the first time doesn't happen again. Yeah. And sometimes I may add, it's, it's the patient. I mean, some patients are just claustrophobic and they automatically, automatically yes. just, they feel, and we had a case today, a patient that came, brand new patient. CPAP failure, worked out for a normal appliance on the on the pharyngometer, accepted the case, but then she started asking questions when I came in the room. Well, what if I don't wear it? Because I'm just not, I'm the type of person where if something is like, feels different when I go to sleep, if my shirt's on the wrong way or something, I, I get uncomfortable and I just can't sleep. I said, well, you came to us today, you're not wearing your CPAP. So that that eliminates that one. We found a great position for you with your old appliance. So, you know, you got to talk to them. You got to coach them. It's not just a simple like, oh yeah, here's your great position. Here's your appliance. Sleep great. We'll talk to you in a, in a few weeks and we'll do a new sleep study, see how you're doing. It's not, you got to, coaching is very important. Uh, sleep care coordinator, Kathy, my sleep care coordinator stays in touch with our patients and, you know, we make sure that they're doing okay, that they're feeling comfortable. If they have any issues, they can always just call us. We bring them back for a two week or a month follow-up, uh, depending on the case. Um, but, you know, again, sometimes it's coaching. It's telling them, hey, put that appliance in a, you know, 30 minutes before bedtime, get used to it, watch TV, read the paper, whatever you do, wear it. Don't just put it on the second you get in bed and close your eyes because then also you're going to be there and you're going to be with the lights off and wondering why am I not sleeping? Oh man, this thing is in my mouth. Yeah. It's driving me crazy. It's not going to work. And next thing you know, it's on the floor and they're not wearing it. So, you know, patients having patients and you working with them patiently is, is, is very important. Yeah, yeah. And it's also, it, it also that little sticky situation where if the patient's insurance is paid for it. Like what, what, what then? What money has to now change hands and kind of, it, it becomes a very, a, a very sticky situation. True. Yep. All right. Let's see here. So I have someone asking about a, um, a demo model, like an office model for a Somnimed appliance. How, like asking if they can get one. Yeah. You How would one get can. one? U.S. sales at Somnimed.com. Hey guys, you hear that? U.S. sales at Somnimed.com. There you go. Yeah, here, Dr. Rosenbaum. Yeah, he's well <laughs> equipped. Have demo, we'll travel. Yes. <laughs> I, I have someone yeah, ask. Actually, this is my pants like a keychain. Yes, it's just right. <laughs> uh, this one's for John. This is pretty interesting. It's like since John's like he's had so many different appliances and so forth. John, have you ever worn a Clearway? How could it ever be comfortable? <laughs> I mean, that's like the old, you know, one of the oldest devices out there. Um, Kind of predates all these modern ones. Uh, no, I, I've not worn one of those. Um, you know, one of the questions we had earlier was like, you know, what devices do you find patients are intolerant to? My experience, bulky fixed devices, big devices, too big, too thick, too much in their mouth, and devices that don't allow a lot of freedom of movement, right? Mm -hmm. So big and locked in. Those are the ones that I hear people complain about the most, and I've seen, you know, for years. Um, so something that's thin, something that has tons of tongue space, and something that allows freedom to open and move laterally, kind of unrestricted. Um, those are the ones I rarely see people complain about. Um, and then specific to that question about the clearway, that was this old school one where it had this big, like, 
expansion mechanism that was all palatal that pushed forward on these little bars that came down. It was all metal. It was it was archaic looking. No, I, I would not sign up for that one. I'm good. Um, I have somebody asking any tricks to adjust appliances in general and especially ones with the soft liner. Um, when you say, well, if we were talking about if it's too tight, uh, adjusting at the cervical portion on the molars, uh, as well as the flanges in between the contacts, that's very helpful um, to relieve some of that tension. Uh, not if you're scanning, not every case comes with a model. If you're taking impressions, they usually do come with a model, but you could um, put the actual appliance on the model before the patient arrives. If it's very hard for you to get off that model, it's probably going to be very hard for you to get off the patient as well. So you can do some pre-adjustments on the models or on the on the appliance, excuse me, um, before the patient arrives, and that's always helpful. Um, but yeah, adjustments are sometimes necessary, and sometimes we have to go ahead and go beyond just the cervical and the flanges and get into the you know the areas where there's crowding, release some of that facial tension on those anterior lower incisors that can sometimes be very uh, you know a little too tight for the patient. Um, so, you know, yeah, there's multiple adjustments that can be done to try to make it more comfortable. Um, quick, com do, quick comment on that from me. Um, you know, like anything else, the more, the more Somnimed you do, the more you can manage expectations of the patient and you can troubleshoot things at delivery. Um, the B-Flex soft liner is, is, uh, we, we've already discussed it. It's, it's really an amazing product. Takes a little getting used to and understand what you're going to experience at delivery. What feels a little too tight at delivery is probably just right because the B-Flex will, and, and Dr. Rosenbaum can comment on this, the B-Flex will kind of relax a little over time um, and or the patient is getting used to it. Um, it's, this business is so subjective. What's comfortable for this patient is, is crazy uncomfortable for that patient. Um, and so, you know, the, the more dental sleep you do, the more that you can manage those unique patients. Yeah. And one little tidbit that we do for our patients, when we put a new appliance in, patient comes in, we insert, we'll place it in, seated, fits good, planes are lined up, great. We'll be back in a few minutes, just sit here in the room, see how it feels, let them just sit with it. And many times when they'll be like, oh, it's so tight. And then you'll come back and then how's it feel? Oh, it actually feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. it's comfortable. So giving them the time on their own to just kind of just see what it feels like, step out of the room, come back, and then, you know, address any concerns, of course. All right, yeah. we're going to finish with these last two questions, um, which I love. I love that people are getting um, involved here. So I have someone asking, will insurance or Medicare pay for a new appliance when an old broken appliance that was made within three years? Let me read that again. Yeah. Maybe. Depends on the back payer. attention and yeah, great excuse to Medicare. I, I don't five years is usually the, I don't know about Medicare, yeah. but for Medicare private is, payers, right? Three years is not outside the scope of possibility. Um, I yeah, think the answer, I think knows. the answer here is make sure your device has a really good warranty. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and then ending for the night, our last question from Dr. Saeed is. Uh, wondering what burr are you using for adjustments? So Dr. Rosenbaum, that's for you, just because um, they're new to sleep. So if you could share what burr you're using. And is there a special burr for the B-Flex? Is that, are you able to adjust it or no? Yeah, there can be minor adjustments on B-Flex. Um, okay. It kind of breaks my heart when I hear it's happening. <laughs> don't, be, don't be touching our B-Flex. Uh, you know, yeah, you, you can probably... We know that minor adjustments happen. It's dentists are going to tinker with these things. Um, but again, I just want to caution what feels a little too tight at delivery is all of a sudden not too tight, as Dr. Rosenbaum said, maybe 10 minutes later or a day later or a week later. Um, so just uh, you know, be, be be careful adjusting any you know, any somnomed devices that have B flex. Yeah, they just chimed in. Yeah, I don't want to do it. Like they're just I get it. It's not, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, all right. So I think this is our evening looking at um uh Facebook and here I think we're good for this evening. Guys, gentlemen, you three, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Lewis, fully appreciate you explaining everything. And I love you know, it. Thank you. I, I love this. And Dr. Rosenbaum, as usual, I love you. I'm gonna see you and Kathy in the morning uh for my dental appointment. But guys, like I said, if any of you uh -huh. has any 
questions. If you, anybody wanting to get in into sleep, get in an office. If you have any questions regarding Somnima, wanting to get in those demo, reach out to Lewis. We're here to help you, which whichever way we can. You know, our goal at the end of the day is to make sure that you have the full support so you can help your patients and treat them for obstructive sleep apnea. That's what we're here. Guys, for. quick before we close out, too, I want to say just a couple of things. We're going to see everybody next week at Roundtable Round down in Dallas. Uh, so, Lewis, I'm sure you'll be there. Um, yes, I will. But, uh, I'll, so, I'll see you down there. Uh, but that's going to be a great meeting. That's one of my favorite sleep meetings of the year. So, I'm um, I'm excited for that. That's going to be a really good. It's going to be a really good show. We got a lot of good stuff down there. Um, we're going to be announcing and talking about some really cool stuff that uh, that we have brewing as far as uh, in-network insurance reimbursements, as well as a, a, a VA uh, whole deal with that, that, uh, that we've got nationwide now. So there's some really good stuff that we're going to talk about with our clients that are down there and some new, you know, some uh, new friends as well. So it'll be a good meeting. Looking forward to that. And then the only other thing, Lewis, I saw you and I are playing each other in fantasy football this week. So oh. that's going to be a problem. Um, well, but I, I, yeah, <laughs> there's I better, no better place to be on Sunday next weekend than it will be at the at the Cowboys facility. But anyway, so cool. thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, Dr. Rosenbaum. Thank you all. Appreciate <laughs> and, uh, it. And I'll see you all next week at uh, Roundtable. Yes. Awesome. Thank, thank you, everybody. you, guys. Have a good night, everyone. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you so much.